In this video, we're going to go ahead and put together our contact activity. So if you recall, we have this activity called contact activity, and currently it's blank. But I want to go ahead and I want to get this all implemented because we pretty much have all of the pieces all ready to put this guy together. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a new uh, service call, and that is our... Our contact activity is going to have a button for removing a contact. So we're going to need some sort of API call to do that. So we'll stub out the the um, the request here and the response here. So I'm going to say public static class remove contact request. And he's going to have a public int contact ID and a public constructor that takes a contact ID. And then he will have a public static class remove contact response, which will extend from service response. And then we'll have a public int removed contact ID. So we'll start off with that. And uh, before we move on from that, I do want to jump back into my messages act uh, messages service and change one quick thing. This string here, the from contact ID, it should be an integer from contact ID. So go ahead and change the field and the constructor parameter. It, it was just an earlier version of this stuff that I was putting together originally had contact IDs being strings. So I'm kind of used to that. But uh, actually, I ended up with uh, implementing them as integers. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and implement it in our in-memory service. So I'm going to jump into our in-memory package here, our in-memory contact service. And then I'm going to just go scroll down to the bottom and say subscribe, public void, remove contact with uh, contacts dot remove contact request request. And then we're going to say contacts dot remove contact response response equals new remove contacts response and then we'll say response dot remove contact ID is request dot contact ID and then we'll say post delayed response so really quickly put that together so at least it'll work when we click on that all right let's head out of that and uh, or I guess I can just open this up real quick if someone wants to pause on that but anyway uh, now let's go ahead and move on here uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to stub out another activity we're getting pretty close to the point where all of our activities have either been implemented or stubbed out, but there's a couple left that we haven't done yet. And that is our contact activity is also going to have a button that will open up a new message. So we're going to need to stub out the new message activity. So I'm going to say new Java class, I'm going to say new message activity, and he's going to inherit from base authenticated activity. We'll go ahead and we'll implement on your create there because it's required. And I'm going to give him a pub couple of public static fields. So I'm going to say public static final string extra contact equals extra contact. And then I'm going to also, eh, actually, you know what? I think that's pretty much all I want to do. That's all we're going to be relying on from our contact activity. All right. So now that I have that stubbed out, I can jump back into the contact activity. And um, I guess I can just go ahead and get going. It's going to be very similar to our other our set messages activity. So in that vein, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the layout. I did that by control clicking on activity contact. You could have also gotten there by opening up your resource folder layout and opening up activity contact. But anyway, instead of this activity contact, what we're going to do here is change our linear layout to a relative layout. So I'm going to go ahead and nuke that um, the orientation attribute. I'm going to create a relative layout. I'm going to remove the text view. I am going to go ahead and include in the toolbar. So I'm going to say include layout equals include toolbar. And for our include toolbar, I'm also going to, um, for as far as his ID goes, um, we should be able to reference that here from within our relative layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a recycler view. So I'm going to say android.support.b7.widget recycler view. He will have a width of match parent, a height of match parent. Then I will, I'm going to go, go ahead and say below include toolbar. And uh, that seemed to work. And then I'm going to go ahead and say scroll bars equals vertical. And really, that's all I need to do other than, of course, giving him an ID. So I'll give him an ID of activity, activity contact messages. 
And then I'm going to create my progress frame. So I'm going to say frame layout, match parent, match parent. He's going to cover everything like usual. Of course, he will be clickable. He will have a background in this case of, let's just do, go something simple, AA000000. Um, we'll go ahead and maybe, maybe more than AA, maybe DD. Yeah, sure, that's fine. And we'll go ahead and give him an ID of activity, contact, progress, frame. I really should be putting this progress frame in an include. This is getting um, tiring. And then we'll go ahead and create a progress bar with wrap content, wrap content, indeterminate only, indeterminate only equals true, and uh, layout gravity is center. Okay, so that's our activity contact. Not that complicated. So let's jump into our activity itself. And uh, this guy's also going to be pretty straightforward. So we're going to have, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and say private user details, user details. Then I'm going to say private message adapter, adapter. Um, we can do private array list of message uh, messages and a private view progress frame. Uh, let's start off by doing our progress frame. Uh, progress frame equals find view by ID, R ID progress frame. So this is going to be activity contact or no activity contact progress frame. Uh, then let's get our user details. So I'm going to say user details equals get intent dot get parsable extra. I know we haven't talked about parsables yet, but we will get parsable extra extra user details. But then I'm going to do something interesting here. I'm going to say if user details equals null, then user details equals new user details. And I'll pass in one for the ID is contact to true display name to a contact username to a underscore contact and gravatar to http www.gravatar.com avatar one dot jpeg so that is our user detail so what are we doing here well we're saying if they if the person who made this activity sent in a user details for us to display then use that for what we're displaying otherwise make up a fake user details for testing because what I'm going to be doing here is when I test my contact activity, I'm going to be right clicking on it and selecting run directly from the IDE. I'm not going to actually go in and click through and find a contact because that's just that's just ridiculously like that. That's going to get very old very quickly when you're trying to rapidly test your contact activity. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm saying, OK, so if they launch the contact activity directly, then just show a fake contact and that will allow efficient and rapid testing. If you're super paranoid about this ever happening in production, um, you could use some sort of um, compiler preprocessor thing or some other technique to remove this code when you're not in de uh, development. However, when you are in development, I highly encourage doing it this way so you don't have to launch your entire application to track down an activity you're working on. Always make things easy to test. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and do our recycler view. I'll do my adapter first. I'm going to say adapter equals new message adapter, passing in this and this. Then I'm going to say messages equals adapter dot get messages. Uh, then we'll do our recycler view. I'll say recycler view, recycler view equals recycler view, find view by ID, r dot ID, list uh, activity contact messages is the one we want. And then for my recycler view, I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to say if is tablet, then recycler view dot set layout manager, new grid layout manager, this to. Otherwise, recycler view set layout manager, new linear layout manager, this. Then we can say recycler view dot set, uh, set adapter is adapter. And um, yeah, so. Let's see. Let's go ahead and set up our our um, action bar. Get support action bar dot set title user. Uh, where are you? User details dot get display name. Then I'm gonna do something interesting here. I want there to be an X button that you click when you click it. The activity finishes. So I'm gonna go ahead and say toolbar dot set navigation icon, and I'm gonna set it to. Um, r.drawable.icab close 
Then I'm going to go ahead and say toolbar dot set navigation on click listener equals new view on click listener. And um, oh, I totally messed that up. Equals new on click listener inner. So we get our generated code here and I'll say finish. And um, really, uh, this is almost it. The last thing we need to do is actually load in our messages. So to do that, I'm simply going to say scheduler dot uh, post every milliseconds new messages dot search messages request passing in user details dot contact ID get ID um, and include sent messages fall or true and include include other messages true and for the milliseconds we're going to go ahead and use the same thing that we did before in our um, set messages activity, which I can't believe that was three minutes. So three, a thousand times 60 times three. And that is that. So now we're going to be loading in our messages. Let's go ahead and implement our adapter um, uh, callback real fast. So I'm going to put my keyboard cursor on the squiggles and I'll hit alt enter and say make contact activity implement the interface and we'll hit enter. And for on message clicked, I'm just going to keep things as simple as possible. I'm not going to worry in this um, in this particular instance for handling when a message gets deleted. So I'm not going to start activity for a response. And the reason I'm doing that is that'll be a great exercise for you guys to deal with. And I guess also in the interest of time. So I'm going to say intent intent equals new intent. This message activity dot class. I'm gonna say intent dot put extra, and I'm gonna pass in message activity dot extra message, and pass in message, and then we'll say start activity intent, and that'll show that message. Okay, so um, at this point we can at the very least test this code out. Now I do want to make sure that I add a new message activity to my manifest, so I'm gonna scroll all the way up to the top to my Android manifest. And I'm going to say activity, new message activity. Make sure make sure you add that to your manifest at some point because we're going to be needing that. Anyway, now let's go ahead and hit play. Let's see what we get now. Um, oh, it doesn't like that ID toolbar. Um, so what I'm going to do here is on my include, I'm going to give this an ID. I'm going to say ID uh, plus ID include toolbar up there at the top. And now let's see if that compiles. And it does. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into our contacts. Let's click on a contact. I really need to reduce that delay, don't I? And we get our spinning thing and we see our, ba okay, it, it for all intents and purposes, it worked just fine. Um, I just forgot that our progress bar is going to show up and kind of ruin the day until we until we dismiss it. So on that note, let's go ahead and handle when our messages get received. So I'm going to say subscribe public void on messages received messages dot um, search messages response response. I did forget to do this earlier, but I definitely only want this code to run when when the um, activity is resumed. So I'm gonna say invoke on resume messages search messages response dot class new runnable. Then I also want to say if response dot did if not response did succeed, then response show error toast contact activity dot this for the um, thingy and then return. The reason I'm doing that is I also don't want to assign any um, um, uh, messages to my array if our messages at some point were, um, uh, if, if the messages attribute of our response is null. So then what I want to do is I want to say basically what we did before, messages.clear, or sorry, old size equals messages.size, um, adapter dot notify item range remove zero to old size and then messages dot add all response which of course will make response final dot messages adapter dot notify item range inserted zero all the way to messages size all right so that is our on message received so let's just keep on moving down here um 
I'm going to go ahead and make a method that we're not going to be using quite yet. And it's going to be public or private void do remove contact, which is simply going to say progress frame dot set visibility view visible and say bus dot post new contacts dot remove contact request user details dot get ID. And then we're going to have a private void do remove or on remove contact, which we're going to annotate with subscribe, of course. And he's going to take in a contacts dot remove contact response response. And for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, if if not spell that correctly. If not response did succeed, then response show error toast this return. Or, and then also progress frame set visibility view visible. Otherwise, go ahead and uh, say finish and just exit the activity. Also, um, we could set a result as well here. We could say set result before we finish to notify any other activity that we we were we removed the contact so i can say public static final int result user removed equals 101 i guess whatever and then come down here and say set result to result user removed Alrighty, so let's go ahead and move on and implement our action bar real fast. Uh, before we do that, before I forget, on our invoke on resume, on our on messages received, I do need to make sure that my um, that I set my progress frame to invisible. So I'm going to say progress frame, set visibility, view gone. And also on my on remove contact, let's go ahead and wrap that up in a invoke on resume. So schedule.invoke on resume, contacts, remove contact response dot class new runnable and then I'm just going to take this code and I'm just going to paste it in there and then I'm going to mark this parameter as final. Just rearranging the code a little bit making sure that we're only invoking this code on resume. Of course the show error toast this now that we're inside of a closure needs to be changed to contact activity dot this. All right now let's go ahead and implement our action bar. So I'm going to go ahead and override a member on create options menu on create options menu right there. And he's gonna say get menu inflator, get menu inflator dot inflate r dot menu dot activity contact, passing in menu and we'll return true. Then let's go ahead and implement our on options items selected. So I'm gonna say override on options item selected. And for this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say int ID equals item get ID. If ID equals R dot menu, or sorry, R dot ID dot activity contact underscore menu underscore new message, or how about just menu new message? So this is the, um, of course, that ID doesn't exist yet, but it will once we create our menu. I'm going to say intent intent equals new intent. This new message activity. Ah, come on, that's not even close. New message activity dot class. Intent put extra. Passing in new message activity dot extra contact user details. So it's going to pre-fill the user details for this particular activity. Then I'm going to say start activity intent return true. Else if ID is, well, we don't really need the else, doesn't really matter. If ID is r.id activity contact menu um, remove friend, then I'm going to show a dialog to confirm them removing the friend. So I'm going to say alert dialog dialog equals alert dialog dot builder, passing in this for the context, passing in a um, new alert dialog builder, a set title of remove friend question mark, set a positive button of um, remove with a on click listener. So a new on click listener that will simply invoke our do remove friend method. And then we'll set a negative button for cancel with a null on click listener. And then we'll say create. And then we'll simply say dialog dot show and then return true. And if either of those if statements don't get executed, return false. 
Okay, so this is basically the implementation of our contact activity. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. There are some opportunities for improvement. For example, on our new message activity, you can have it where we start the activity for a result, and then when the new message activity returns, update the, uh, this, this screen with that new message. So there's stuff that you can do to make it better, but in this case, in the interest of time, I've already shown you guys how to do all that stuff already, so you guys can do that on your own. All right, the last thing that we need to do here is implement our menu. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm simply gonna do, place my keyboard cursor here on the activity contact, hit alt enter and say create menu resource. Now for this menu resource, we'll have two items. The first item will have an ID of um, new message. So I'm just gonna copy this ID in and paste it right there. And say icon is gonna be drawable I see action reply. It's going to have a title of new message and it's going to have an app show as action equals with text if room. And I'm going to go ahead and hit alt enter on this app to create the pro appropriate namespace up here at the top, the appropriate XMLNS. Now let's create our second item. Let me jump back into contact activity for a second because I'm going to take this code right here and put it on my clipboard. I'm going to hit control C. And then I'm going to say ID is plus ID, and then I'm going to paste that in there. The icon is going to be drawable. I see action delete. It's going to have a title of remove. And we're going to keep this in the overflow, so we're not going to specify any sort of um, um, behavior for the show's action. And that's it. Let's go ahead and hit play. Well, actually, um, uh, let's go ahead and fix that typo first. Uh, what I am going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and right-click on contact activity, and I'm going to say run contact activity. So we're going to launch that activity directly and not have to go through the app to get to that activity. Let's go ahead and use this device. And we get an exception. Let's see what happened here. Um, unable to find explicit activity, message activity. Did I not add it to my manifest? I did. Why would that code even execute in the first place? Hmm. Unable to find explicit activity class, activities message activity. Have you de declared it? I have actually. Unless we are getting into some really bizarre sort of uh, Thing here. Yeah, I have it right there. Let's go ahead and hit run again. Don't think this is a problem, my end to set every programmer ever. All right, I tracked down the issue. Uh, that was bizarre. Uh, just something that I've, I guess I've just never done before. And um, as a result, I never saw the error. And to be, to be honest, that error had nothing to do with what the actual problem was, by the way. Those are, those are the best things to debug. But I did find out what was wrong. And it has nothing to do with the manifest or registering or intents. What it has to do with is this guy right here. So the on remove contact is a subscribed is a is a method that we're subscribing. We're subscribing to this particular response, but it's marked as private, which auto requires all of your uh, subscribe your event handlers to be marked as public. So once I fix that, I'm going to right click contact activity and say run. Again, super bizarre. You wouldn't expect that to be the actual issue, but whatever. And check that out. We now have a contact. So if we click on one of these messages, we get sent into our message activity. Uh, if I hit this little guy up here, I can say remove, and I can remove the friend. If I say remove, we get our spinning guy, and then the activity finishes, which is exactly what we want. Because um, uh, note that when I launch this activity, I'm launching it directly. When this activity finishes it's gone so it just goes away we can hit reply and we get that and we can hit um the exit button and the activity finishes so yeah that is the contact activity um like i said you guys can make it better if you want you've seen ways to make it better i would start off with cleaning up this on your create 
Um, in fact, I can do that. I can go ahead and just... I'm going to rearrange some stuff real fast because this stuff is kind of ugly. Uh, let's do this right there. Let's do our toolbar and our title bar at the top. Let's get our progress frame. Let's do that right before getting our recycler view. And... Um, yeah, I think that looks better. Just kind of grouping things that are sort of related together. Now we'll hit play just to make sure I didn't break anything. But there shouldn't be anything that's um, dependent on the order. I, I literally didn't change any code. I just like my stuff to be kind of logically grouped together in a way that sort of makes sense. I also like the aesthetics of the code too. When um, certain similar constructs are uh, placed next to each other. If they're similar in length. Anyway, I think that's just about it. So I guess we will see you guys in the next video.